But now we know that um, although it's not written in the guidelines, there are other phases, and I thought we'd include them because uh, everybody describes them now. And there's a phase after the quiescent phase whereby there's a reactivation of the DNA. And this classically is the E antigen negative hepatitis, which I'll discuss further. And this is something which we should recognize. In other words, if a patient has got, is an old patient at 40 years old with a normal liver function test and a low DNA, one should still follow up these patients because there is about 25-30% risk that these patients will actually have a flare of hepatitis in a different form. Yeah? So, presently we believe that there are five phases, the immune tolerance phase, the immune clearance phase, the low application phase, the reactivation phase of the fourth phase whereby either the patient reactivates back to the original wild type virus, the E antigen, or the patient develops a mutant, the E antigen negative hepatitis phase. And the last phase is the occult hepatitis B phase, whereby the patient clears hepatitis B, but now there's more and more talk that these patients actually have got a higher risk of hepatoma and a higher risk of a flare if they're given chemotherapy. Now, like I said, the immune tolerance phase from the age of about 0 to 15, the E antigen is always positive, the DNA is usually very high, the liver function test is normal, and we do histology, the, the histology is usually normal or almost minimal changes. In these patients, we do not treat these patients. Uh, very often, the DNA is very high, it's very dramatic, but treating these patients is a waste of time. So we do not treat these patients unless they got liver cirrhosis or with hepatitis. But by and large, these patients should be left alone. Now, immune clearance phase is the phase whereby you see most patients, and this stretches from the age of 15 to 35. In these patients, they are E antigen positive, they are very infective. The DNA is usually not as high as the first phase, it's on its way down. They often get a high abnormal liver function test because it's the time when the body recognizes the reaction to and reacts to hepatitis B. In these patients, you tend to get a bit more hepatitis when the ALT is up. And these patients actually do have problems, and they, there's a high incidence of cirrhosis in these patients if the liver function is perceived abnormal. Now, it's important to know that in these patients, in these phases, about uh, uh, a quarter of the patients actually develop an uh, abnormal liver function test, and uh, a quarter of them develop jaundice. But very often, a lot of them are actually silent, and it's only when you pick up a, a, a blood test that they find them abnormal. And this is something which we can refer to a lot of patients with hepatitis B, have abnormal liver function tests, and they have no symptoms. And this is probably the phase they're going through. Yeah? In this phase, if the if liver function is very bad, the patient actually decompensate. But the mortality is very low. But it's good to have this it's good to have this abnormality because it shows you that the body is actually reacting to the virus. Now this uh, the purpose of this phase is to convert the E antigen to E antibody because as you know, E antibody by large means there's less virus in the blood. And only uh, but unfortunately only 25% of all flares, that means the patient have normal liver function test, one in four will convert the antibody. With over rate of 10 to 20% a year. Most of the other patients will actually uh, will subside by themselves, and in a few years time they flare again, and subside by themselves, and they flare again. So a lot of patients have met multiple flares, which is generally not good for them. Um, now, there are some factors which you look at which favor conversion at this stage. And we look at the SGPT ALT levels. We look at the DNA levels because if they are low, it means the body is reacting well. And uh, if you do a liver biopsy, there's single inflammation. Um, so we often, most of us would just do the DNA levels and the ALT levels and it gives us a clue as to whether the patient uh, will convert by itself or the patient needs some help. Uh, I generally do not treat my patients with the abnormal liver function test unless the abnormal liver function test goes on for more than six months or so. I usually rather observe them because by and large, if nature takes a course, they'll come by themselves. Unless you think the patient has got very severe liver disease or an underlying condition is very bad. Now, the problems in this stage, which you probably see often, is that in the repeated episodes of ALT elevation and flares, it just gives rise to more liver damage. Right? The other problem is that if the patient has got an E positive, persistent and positive and high DNA level, after the usual age of 35, then it also got problems because it means that somehow they failed to convert. And this uh, slide which shows this study which tells you that most of the patients that zero convert the word E to NTE actually do it up to the age of 35 and are the most 40. 
after the age of 40, only about 10% of the remnant patients are, are permanently or have got residual E antigen positivity. And these 10% of patients do not do well. They tend to develop liver cirrhosis uh, progressively. So if you see a patient who is E antigen positive at an old age, above 40 for example, and the ALT is high, then you have to treat the patient. Okay? Um, if the ELT, ALT is normal, then a lot of us have a lot of debates where to treat the patient. But I just want to remember that if you have a patient who is E antigen positive and at a, at a significantly older age, then the patient needs to be worked out more thoroughly. Now, at the lower breaking phase, which is generally above the age of 35, patients are supposed to be well, the liver is normal, uh, the DNA load is very low, and the histology and biopsy is normal. So these are the patients, these are so-called third phase acquiescent phase, which you all like to see patients. And there are patients who, have, who still remain in this phase. Right? The majority of patients remain in this phase. But uh, we know now that the patients remain in this phase probably belong to a certain genotype of hepatitis B. And patients that remain, that remain in this phase are usually those who zero convert from E to NDE at an early age. Now, then it comes to the fourth phase, the reactivation phase we discussed. And these patients, somehow, especially in the first two years, the, the patient from E antibody becomes E antigen again, they zero revert. And it's quite a, not a common finding, but it does happen. And it happens more commonly when we give patients drugs than naturally done. Right? And the other problem with reactivation phase is that you tend to get this condition called E antigen negative hepatitis. Right? So in this uh, uh, reactivation phase, in the early stages, one tends to see more uh, E antigen reversion. And in the later phases, you tend to see more of the E antigen negative hepatitis, which is actually a mutant hepatitis B. And these patients tend to develop it with time and with age. So age is very important in hepatitis B. The older you are, especially if you've got active liver, active hepatitis B, the worse you become. Right? So when you see a patient, always look at the age of the patient and the activity of the disease and the antigen, antibody and the DNA levels, then you assess. So in the reactivation phase, uh, there are two possibilities when there's a flare, either a reversion or even the hepatitis. I think most of us will see actually the second one, hepatitis more commonly. Right. And it shows you that uh, the incidence of uh, hepatitis goes uh, higher and higher after the antigen from conversion. And uh, I think the incidence in Singapore is about 25 to 30%. Now, hepatitis is uh, basically a, a variant of virus from uh, the usual hepatitis. It's caused by uh, changes in the nucleotide 1896 or, or core promoter region. It's not important for us to remember that it's caused by mutant virus. And this virus fails to produce E antigen. So you get a virus which is, fails to produce antigen but does replicate. Um, it's common in genotype B, C, and D in Euro Asia. Prevalence about 25 to 30%. And it usually occurs in older patients, and the prevalence increases with age. And unfortunately, this virus, this uh, antigen negative hepatitis, tends to occur in patients who are, who got a very bad virus, who tend to, to tend to zero convert late, and they have prolonged like, viremia at a later age. So basically, at the end of the day, you got a bad virus, you just got a bad disease all the way. And the theory behind this virus is that uh, it's because of immune stimulation. Uh, uh, by drugs or by the body, which gives it a wild type virus. A lot of viruses have to survive, so they mutate. And when they mutate, uh, they, they are not as, they're not, uh, as, uh, they not repl do not replicate as well as a wild type virus, but because when the wild type virus is eliminated, the variant virus tends to go up. Now, characteristic of this virus is that the ALT levels and the viral levels, DNA tends to fluctuate. But the sad part of this virus is that it tends to run a course which is about 100% worse than the e antigen positive patients, the wild type virus. And more than 50% have severe inflammation, 30% uh, have cirrhosis at presentation. Interesting part of this virus is that it can transmit this virus, but it doesn't transmit chronicity. In other words, you can get infected by e antigen negative hepatitis, but you do not develop chronic liver disease from it. 